everybody, thanks for tuning in clicking on today's video. Today I want to share with you a product spotlight, kind of a first impressions video. This is stuff that I purchased myself. I was not given this, it was not sent to me for free, so this is just a, an honest review. And like I said, it's a first impression, so this stuff I've, I've kind of played with a little bit at home, but it's my first time being out here and using it. What I have with me today is a fire kit that I put together myself. Uh, from Fiddleback Outpost. Now, whether they remember me or not, I met the, the people at Fiddleback Outpost at Blade Show last year, and they were really good people. They spent time, talked to you, they showed you their products, they really cared about what they were doing. And I was flipping through the internet late one night and saw that they had a sale on their fire kits. Now, what's really cool about this is it starts off with a pouch, and then you add pieces to the fire kit from different companies that they carry on their website and you put together your own fire kit. So some of this stuff, if you already have it, you don't add it to it, or if this is just all brand new to you and you wanna try all of it, you can. And a good thing about it is you get a certain percentage off for each item that you add to it. I wanna say it's like 15%. And to my knowledge right now, the uh, link is still active and that sale is still going on. So I'll put that information in the description box below. Before I jump into the kit and what I added to it, I think it's really important for us to stop and understand why fire is such an important skill to have as outdoorsmen and women. It's something that it, it's multi-useful. It, it does a whole lot for you. Yes, the cutting tool on your hip is very important, but, but fire is right up there with it. Fire can make you containers. It can, it can help with hygiene as far as your body odor. It can help keep bugs away. If, if you have a container, you can boil water to make it safe to drink. You can make concoctions and medicines with, uh, with wild medicinals using fire. You can burn out containers if you don't have one with you and stone boil. There's so many things that fire does for you. And that's why so many people that, that run schools or, in, or instructors focus so much time on teaching students fire because it's the one thing that if anything gives you comfort at night. If you, if you are in a situation where you're having to, uh, to spend the night in the woods and, and you weren't planning on it, having that fire even adds that protection and that safety that you feel seeing it. And, and let's be honest, it's the original Caveman TV. I mean, you can spend hours just sitting there watching fire. With all that said, I'm all for carrying gear to make life easier for you when you go out into the woods. I, I always bring stuff with me that I know I'm probably not gonna use, especially on day hikes, but having it is better than w wishing you had it if you do need it. So it's the same thing for me in, in the fire kits like this. I am a big advocate of, of starting fires with materials from the land, not necessarily primitive like bow drill fires, but using natural tenders and, uh, and kindling and things that you find on the land so that you don't have to bring as much stuff with you. But I'm also just as big of an advocate of finding a, a man-made, non-natural material or product that can help you get a fire, a sure fire every time. Because anybody that tells you that they've gotten a fire every time they've gone out into the woods is lying to you. I don't know how many times I've failed making fire and even times whenever I've needed a fire and I've failed. And if it wasn't for me having something like these products and these sure fire products with me, uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to get one. Whether it's it's been raining and mother nature is fighting you to get a fire going or you just can't find the resources that you were wanting or hoping that would be there. If you know your environment around you, and you know how to process materials and you know the properties of the materials, kind of like what Larry was talking about in, in the a couple of videos before this one, you have that comfort of knowing I don't have to use this unless it's, unless it's dire emergency because I know my area around me. And when you get on Fiddleback Outpost's website and you click on the link that'll be in the description below, it'll start off with this Maxpedition uh, EDC case, I believe, like the Slim, I think it's what it's called. It's a, it's a really good pouch. It's got molly on the back. It's got a grab, grab handle up here, a little spot for your uh, morale patch, and then even a, uh, a Velcro front pocket, mesh pocket up in the front. Although I, I do like it and, it, and it is nice to carry this kind of stuff in, I would probably be more inclined to putting the majority of what's gonna be in here in one of my Hidden Woodsman fire kit bags probably. But it starts off with this nice little pouch, and then it, it has two zippers that open up this way. So when you open it up, here in the front you have elastic webbing. There's different size webbing, some that's, that's smaller fit and others that are bigger. And then on the other side you've actually got even wider options. So you've got a multitude of options for storing uh, the kit. Some of the stuff in here I am familiar with the company, but it was just products that they carry that I have not used yet. First thing is the fat rope stick from Production Higger 51. 
I've been seeing a lot of their stuff on Instagram and different people on YouTube using their stuff, so I wanted to try it. To the best of my knowledge, it is a woven rope that has been saturated in wax. I also ordered the Exotac Match Cap XL. Now this did not come with matches, but I already had them with me, so I just went ahead and put those in here. It holds the Yuko Stormproof matches. Not the, the huge Titan ones, but the regular size ones. And it almost holds a whole box of 25. I think there was, I think it was too short. It's got a striker on the inside, inside the O-ring. So that for sure will be dry. And it's also got a striker on the bottom. And then it came with uh, an extra striker for the bottom that you can glue there yourself. And an extra striker for the inside, I believe. Like I said, it's got an O-ring on here. Once you screw this thing tight, it's not supposed to leak. So we're going to test that out here today by the creek. I also ordered a fire still from Firewater Survival. This is pretty cool. It's just a little small fire still. It's probably not something that I would uh, carry with me all the time, but to have in a kit as a last ditch reserve, it works great. It's magnetic. So it's a, it's a wooden fire still with a striker on one side and the actual ferro rod on the other, and it fits together really cool and there's a magnet in there that once you get it aligned it snaps shut we'll be testing this out today I've, I've struck it a couple of times on the inside but I haven't used it out yet and I think I've got the one that was uh, the cherry wood something that I've had for a while that I just brought out here with me because I'm using some of their other gear is this uh, Exotac Bic lighter sleeve uh, I was given to this by a friend a long time ago probably like two or three years ago when they first came out and I've just, I've never thought twice about it. It's just stayed in one of my kits. So we're gonna try this out today too. Speaking of lighters, I also ordered the Exotac Titan Light. This, this thing has intrigued me for a while because while I am a fan of Zippos, they're kind of nostalgic being able to flip them and do the different tricks and stuff. The fact is, unless you get one of those inserts, like a couple of buddies have told me by now, the, the butane inserts, if you just leave it with the fuel in there, it evaporates, it evaporates because it's not sealed. So this is a take on a Zippo lighter with an O-ring on the top portion and the bottom portion and uh, the striker and wheel, just like what you would see with a uh, with the Zippo. And it's supposed to be waterproof also, so we will test that out. And the last thing I ordered was a Fiddleback Outpost. Looks like a fire puck almost. It, it looks like uh, sawdust with some kind of impregnated wax material or something on here. So I've also seen people using this, so we're gonna try that out today too. So first things first, the three things that are supposed to be waterproof, I've got them tied here, a piece of bank line, and I'm gonna tie them to a stick up here on the bank and leave them in the water. And then I'll bring the camera in and we'll start going over all the different tinder and opening up the packaging and looking at all of it up close while this stuff is soaking in the water. I'm gonna throw it down in this probably two foot little hole right here of water and we'll see what, what, it, what happens. So it's all supposed to be waterproof. Hopefully I don't catch any kind of turtle or anything. I don't think they're gonna <laughs> want a pipe fire starter. All right, I can see that they're sitting on the bottom. So we'll come back to that here in a second. So what we have left is just the fire water survival striker and ferro rod. The Fiddleback Outpost Fire Puck is what I'll call it. Like I said, I brought some of the packaging that Fiddleback Outpost put in the box, like you saw in the beginning of the video. And I'm curious to see if they just put this in here just to make it look cool, or if you can actually use this for <laughs> tinder or fire starting. And the Fat Rope from Production Hanger 51. So let's take a look at this, at this, these two different tenders that I that I added to the kit. First, I'm going to look at the the fire puck from uh, Fiddleback Outpost. It's pretty hard and compressed, but I don't know what it's gonna be like once you break it apart, whether it's all gonna start crumbling off or whether it stays kinda, kinda compacting together. So because of that, I'm gonna be kinda careful with how I open it. I'm not just gonna shred the package all the way around because I don't want this going everywhere in the little kit bag that I have with it. So it doesn't break off really easy, but there is some, there is some finer stuff that's just kinda hanging out in there. And what I had planned to do is just break off, perfect, just like that, break off just a little chunk. And I wanna see how it reacts to different flames. 
obviously we've got our waterproof fire starters, the matches, the Titan light, and the big sleeve uh, soaking in the water right now. But what we do have with us is the ferro rod from Firewater Survival. So I'm gonna break off a little bit of this chunk here and leave it here and then put this off to the side. And I wanna see how this reacts with a ferro rod because most of us will be carrying a big lighter with us or in this case that Titan light. So I can assume that this reacts to open flame the way it's supposed to, but I wonder if it will take a spark from a ferro rod. So I'm just gonna use the striker and a ferro rod that come with it. There's multiple different ways I guess you could hold this, but what feels most natural to me is to kind of hold it down like this. And we'll just put some sparks in there and see. So there we go. It took a little bit. I didn't, this isn't the uh, the biggest ferro rod. So like I said, it would be something that you'd want to keep in a kit, probably for a last ditch effort or just to, to have a spare. They do, I did see on the website, although I didn't add it to my kit, they do have bigger ones. So that, that might be an option for you if you want to have a, a ferro rod this style. I prefer to just kind of carry one on my sheath and use the back of my spine. But since we're out here, I figured I would use what I ordered in my kit. So this stuff is burning pretty good. It's not super windy out here today, but we have enough of a breeze that it, it can give a little bit of trouble and it's just, it's burning really well. Hot flame, you can see some of the black smoke off of it. So that's good to know that it will take a spark from a ferro rod. Something I've noticed is that you can actually stir it or move it around and it kind of reignites the flame a little bit. So that's kind of that's cool because it's burning the stuff that's closest to the top and then there's a layer underneath it that's on the ground that hasn't yet caught fire so it's it's a pretty slow burn i want to put this out and i want to what i immediately thought of when i looked at this puck is how well it would probably work in stoves i've seen steve over at firebox stove use a product similar to this i don't know if it's the same product or not but he breaks it up and puts it on top of stuff in his stove and it looks like it works really, really well. So we're gonna try that next. So I brought out with me today a stove that a, that a buddy of mine made. It's not one that you can get on the internet or anything at this time, I don't think. I'll have to ask them. But it's one that I haven't used in a while and I really enjoyed it for when I first got it and I found it and was like, man, I need to use it again. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of stuff in here. Not a whole lot. I'm not, I'm not wanting this thing to get going crazy. I just wanna see how well it'll work with just using this kind of fire puck stuff in a stove. What I'm gonna do is just get a little a little bit of it going here that's spilled off on the on the rock and then I'll hold this piece above it and uh, and hopefully get it started that way and then drop it in on the on the stove. Alright so that piece is going. This piece is going. I like this bigger piece. So like I've seen with Steve do and other people do with their, their different stoves, this kind of fire starter, whether it's the same that Firebox uses or not, it works really well for stoves because it, especially if you've got a lighter, you can light that small piece in there and put it down in there and it's gonna burn and burn and burn. And with a stove having all the different ports and, and holes that are sucking air in, it's gonna cause that, that material, this sawdust or whatever this is made out of, to just burn really well inside the stove. So it's definitely something handy to have to get your stove burning quick if you don't wanna fool with trying to get natural materials or whatever started by holding your bic in the in the hole down below the feed port down below uh, i think i think it would work really well and it's definitely something i would i would probably carry with me especially on just overnights or something when i'm just trying to use my stove to cook food i'm not trying to build a big fire for the evening to stay warm and and that that happens a lot for me in the summertime because it just gets so hot here in texas that 
we don't want to have a fire burning all night. We want to use the fire to cook food. And other than that, we don't, we don't need it. So having a stove like this and something really handy, like this fire puck, will work out really well. Next thing that I, that I added to the kit was a fat rope stick. And like I said, I've seen a lot of this going around on Instagram and different people using it in their videos. And I was curious and wanted to give it a shot. And from what I can tell, the way that people use it is they cut this plastic off. And obviously you would keep the plastic. You don't want to trash the place up that you're going to. And then you just shave off pieces of this into a, a fluffy little pile. So once again, while our matches and our lighters are soaking, I'm going to try to start this with only using that Firewater Survival Ferro Rod. That stove is ripping and roaring now. All right, so I'm just going to take a small section like this, put a cut in the plastic. We cut it down here. I'm trying not to get this stuff everywhere. There we go. This is a pretty hard material. It's not flimsy like what you would think a regular rope would be. And it's just because it's just loaded with wax. I'm going to take my knife and just cut off pieces of it like what I've seen other people do. It's crazy, it, uh, it cuts like fat wood, where it just kind of comes off in chunks. You can't really, uh, like little shavings, you know, you can't really make long feathers and stuff with it. So let's try this ferro rod again. I'm not sure if you're supposed to fluff this up or what. There we go. gonna let this burn once again it's there's some black smoke coming off of it it almost has the same properties as the fire puck from fiddleback outpost it seems like if you stir it yep it, it burns see that piece by itself if you stir it it'll kind of reignite it Blowing on it, mild wind, it and putting it out. That was blowing on it pretty hard. So that's cool stuff. Now that we've gotten the two tenders that I added to my fire kit started with the ferro rod, that firewater survival ferro rod that I added to my kit. Let's check on what's been soaking this whole time. And I dare say it's probably been 45 minutes, give or take, setting up the camera and getting all the different shots and getting this stuff started. So let's check it out. Hey, it looks like everything is still attached. Let's get this off the stick. I'm not going to edit or cut any of this right now because it's important, the integrity of this, that it's not some kind of trick or that you think I've edited stuff out. All I did was put a bowl in. It'll be easy to get this undone even though it's wet. For people that have fingernails, it's even easier. Okay. Put this up there. First off, the thing that I'm most curious about, because it doesn't actually have a screw top with an O-ring, is this Bic lighter sleeve. Now this thing is pushed all the way down, and I'm curious to see what happens. So I'm going to do that first. Doesn't appear that there's any water in there. Oh, still works. 
So that was just water from the lid on the outside of the lid. Bic, Bic lighter still works. So that's awesome. We know how much, uh, how much we love our Bic lighters. It's easier to flick the Bic anytime that you can. That's handy to have because it doesn't have a screw top or nothing. It's just got little ridges on here that it's a compression fit. So that's good to go. Next, let's try the Titan light. Everything on here was screwed down tight. Doesn't appear to be any water around the O-ring. Light's perfect. And the thing about this is that if water got into the bottom, into that dabbing, then this wouldn't have worked either because it would have been saturated with water and it would have been harder to light. So that's awesome. And then last is the Match Cap XL. This down here is obviously wet, the striker pad down here, but we're still going to try to strike one off of that. And none of this is wet. O-ring is dry, the striker, striker pad on the back is dry. So first let's, all the matches are dry. First let's strike the bottom and see if it works. So that won't work because it is wet. It's just pulling off the material on the head. But that's the good thing about why they have this in here. So what I would suggest doing so that you don't dump all your matches out is when you go to strike this, put your finger against all the matches. That way they don't come out. There we go. These things are awesome. Which by the way, if you haven't seen this, Let's try that again. Take another one. There we go. It just ran out of the fuel stuff by the end, at the end of the match. They burn quick, but they burn super hot. Pretty cool. So you can see that the Fiddleback Outpost fire puck lights no problem with open flame <laughs> as long as you hold it close enough to it sometimes these things are user error next let's try the fat rope open flame I've got no doubt that it's gonna work we won't even uh, break it up just shave it off in chunks So that light's perfectly fine with open flame also. So just for giggles and curiosity's sake, the packing that Fiddleback Outpost puts in the box, and if you order one of these kits, it looked flammable to me, and I just wanted to try it. So we'll try an open flame with it. Sure is. Isn't that cool? So that's it for today's video. I just wanted to come out here and try out some new products that I got. I've been a fan of Exotac for a little while now. I, like I said, I was given that big sleeve a while back and was pretty confident that it would work. I hadn't soaked it in water that long, but I have put it in the, in the sink and let water run over it, and I knew that it worked. And then I also have one of their XO uh, fire rods or fire strikers with the screw top and all of that. So I'm, I'm happy that they're coming out with, with new stuff that's kind of pushing the market along as far as 
people that are fans of Zippos but don't want to fuel like fuel it up all the time or deal with the the fuel leaking out of it now that you've got o-rings on here it's much more efficient this is going on about a week for me carrying the Titan XL lighter and so far I haven't put a bick in my pocket yet um, everything else to me was brand new out here I hadn't tried any of those fire starters I hadn't tried the uh, the match case or any of that yet but it's a it's an awesome little kit if you want to check it out the link will be in the description below it's fiddleback outpost and it's their fire kit whether or not this is going to be a part of my everyday kit it might be a question that you're asking I'm not sure yet I really do like the the puck the fire puck from fiddleback outpost for stove purposes because I could just put it in a ziploc bag break off a piece and I know that you know a chunk the size of a quarter is going to get my stove started even if there's inadequate material or if it's not packed right so I do like that I like the fat rope stick because it stays together even after you cut it and shave it apart the wrapping keeps it together and the the shavings don't just get everywhere unlike that puck you'd have to keep it in a plastic bag or it could break and get all over everything inside your bags I'll have to see just look for future videos I guess to see if I'm gonna use it or not but I just wanted to share this this pretty good deal for a fire kit and also just something new to new to me so thanks for watching everybody remember to get outside and enjoy the woods